Hi and welcome to my next video. Today I'm going to show a couple new things I've added. Let's jump right into play. The first thing that you'll see is that now when I shoot the, uh, the battery meter is starting to recharge a little bit on its own. You can see it a little bit while I'm shooting and if I stop shooting you can see it uh, refill. Uh, the other thing I want to show is the pause menu by pressing escape. I now get a resume, start over, and quit buttons. If I press escape again, it goes back to the game. If I hit resume, it also goes back to the game and you'll notice that the ship is going to jump to where my mouse is. It needs to be changed. If I hit start over, then you'll see the stars start to come down again from the top of the screen and also these numbers get reset. Start over. And the quit does not work when I'm in this mode. You'll have to do a, um, a file build to be able to do that. So if I were to go through this, I'd be able to show you that the quit works. All right, so let's jump into the scripts to see how this works. First of all, I'll show you the battery. The battery recharges based on the ratio of the current battery to the maximum battery values and um, multiplies that by some recharge rate and time dot delta time. So all these numbers can be balanced later on, which I intend to do. Okay, so now I'm going to show the menu stuff. So in display, which is attached to my main camera, I am waiting for the player to press escape. And I do that with input dot get key down, key code dot escape. And if that is pressed, then I check to see what the time dot time scale is. Now it is normally set to one. So I have this if statement, if it is not equal to zero, then I intend to pause the game. So I change the time scale to zero. <coughs> and I also um, take the audio listener and I pause it. This will pause all the music. Now when I press escape again, I want to get rid of the menu. So I want to resume time scale by setting it equal to one. That's here, and um, uh, audio listener dot pause equal to false to restart the music. So then what happens? Well, this just sets the time scale equal to zero or one, and then down in the on GUI function, I'm going to scroll down past all of the stuff that I filmed before the ship's hole and the batteries to this section here. So I check. Uh, in the on GUI function, if time dot time scale is equivalent to zero, then I want to do this section of code. So you'll notice that it starts here with the GUI layout dot begin area, and I've indented here to remind me that all this stuff is inside the area, and then down here, GUI layout dot end area, and you cannot nest these areas together. So the begin area takes a rectangle and um, the four parameters here are the left and then the top and then the width and the height uh, parameters. So I want this to start at screen.width over two. So that's going to be um, right in the middle of the screen, left and right. But I'm going to subtract or go left a little bit, half the width of the menu. Something similar with the height, I'm going to take half of the screen height and subtract or go up half of the menu height. And then the size, the width and the height are just going to be uh, the menu width and menu height that I have set above. So we could do any variables or any values there. So the buttons are, um, they return true or false. So if it's clicked, it returns a true. And so we need to put this inside of an if statement. So this creates the button and then we can handle whatever happens when the button is clicked. 
So GUI layout.button, the title is here in text, so it's going to be called resume. And then any other parameters here that you want to set are, uh, you just put them in here. So I'm only using one, GUI layout.height, and I'm going to set that equal to button height. Now if the um, resume button is clicked, this is going to be the same as above when I hit escape in the update function. I'm going to set time scale equal to 1 and audio listener dot pause equal to false. And then there's a little space here, GUI layout dot space, and I'm just going to pad a little bit of um, visual space between the buttons. The next button is going to be called start over, it has the same height, all these are going to have the same height for now. Um, the time scaler is returned to 1, audio listener dot pause equal false, and then I load the level again. So my scene is called level 1, and that is shown back here in the project view. And if you ever change the name of your scene, then you need to change the name here because it's looking for the text name. Um, alternately, you can add different scenes um, in the build section here and they all get an integer value so it's possible to reorder these and then your numbers would be off so just make sure whenever you change a name or the ordering there that you update uh, whatever load uh, level call you you give it all right another space here and then the quit button which is uh, which calls application dot quit okay so then what I'm going to go over to enemy stats and if you remember from before I was giving the enemies um, an amount of hit points based on time so I was giving them um, enemy curl life time dot time um, this is just for testing I just wanted their hit points to increase as I played the game so eventually my bullets could not uh, kill everything in one shot um, but what happens here time dot time there's only one value of that from when you launch the game. So what happened was in my menu when I would click on restart game, time.time .time did not reset to zero. So this command, time dot time since level load, um, is going to keep track of when you loaded the last scene. So that's exactly what I want. And also in the wave script, um, I was using time.time .time to generate all the new um, enemy waves, so I had to change this to time since level load as well. Now, when I pause the game, um, all of my enemy movements, which are based on time.delta time, uh, such as the battery recharge here, but all of the X and Y positions were based on time.delta time. So when I pause the game, those all freeze, and that works out just fine. But the enemy, or the player ship, is moved by the mouse. So when I would pause, I could still move my ship around. And to fix that, I added an if statement to my update function, which basically um, uh, encloses all of the code that I had in there before. So I make sure that the time scale is not equal to zero and then I uh, basically run the ship update function.